Okay, let's talk about this most famous math number, and it's definitely a number, a value you must know in mathematics, okay? And uh, typically, uh, it tends to scare a lot of people. And I don't say scare, but um, it's kind of mysterious, I guess is a better way of saying it. So we have this number, and if uh, you know what this symbol stands for, uh, drum roll please, it is the symbol, okay, or variable that represents the number pi, okay? So we're gonna be talking about pi, and if you just stick around, even if you're completely lost about this number, or you don't even know what this number's about, you definitely wanna stick around for this uh, video. It's gonna be a kind of a shorter video, but I need you to understand uh, this, probably one of the most important, if there was a contest for the most important numbers in mathematics, this would be like the first runner-up probably, okay? Of course, all numbers are equally important, but this guy here just has so much, you know, like, uh, history and application in all levels of mathematics. So we're going to get into that in just one second. But uh, first, let me introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and over many years I've constructed a ton, and I mean a ton, of online math courses. So if you're obviously in middle school, high school, or even beyond that, I'm going to leave a link to my math help program. So if you've got to take a full math course, you can take one of my courses, or um, if you're struggling in the course that you're in, you can use my course material to kind of, uh, you know, as a supplement, if you will. A lot of people use my program in that way. But um, all my courses are probably the most comprehensive courses online. And I don't say that lightly because they literally have taken me over a decade to build. I really pour out a huge amount of information uh, so you can master all the materials at these levels of mathematics. So again, if you want to check that out, you can leave the um, you can follow the link in the description. Um, also, uh, hopefully you're taking good notes okay, in class. If you're not, you need to. I've done more than a few videos on my YouTube channel about the importance of note taking. But if you need a good pair of notes right now, just to uh, catch up, I um, offer pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, trigonometry notes. I'll probably add to that as well, but you can find those in the description or underneath this video if that's something that interests you. Okay, so let's get into this number pi, all right? This is, again, just, you know, uber important, all right? All right, so here we got some circles. Let's just first determine or figure out what is pi, right? What is it? What are we even talking about? Okay, what's this number? Well, here's the symbol, okay? This is just... It comes from the Greek alphabet, pi, okay? This is a, uh, the Greek symbol for that, okay? Now, we use these variables in mathematics because these numbers uh, here go on for a very long time. So pi is approximately equal to 3.14. Now, most of you probably already knew that, but if you didn't know that, you know it now, okay? so. This number pi is approximately equal to 3.14. So you're probably saying, well, listen, uh, Mr. Math Teacher, why don't you just tell me the exact value of pi? You know, like, what is it exactly? To, I don't want this approximate business. Well, we run into a little problem, you know, in terms of what is the exact value of pi. The best I can do is just give you this symbol. I'll get into that in a second. Just know that pi is approximately equal to 3.14. All right, now where does this number come from, okay? So you can see I have some circles here, all right? Now, here's where this uh, number comes from. If you take a circle, and I mean any circle, all right? Just look around where you're at right now. You can see circles everywhere. So if we take the width of the circle, all right, let's just call this the width. Now, we have a technical name for the width. It's called the diameter, okay? The diameter is the widest part of a circle, and you can measure that in infinitely number of different directions within the circle, okay? But that's the diameter of the circle. It's the width of the circle, okay? So we need that. We're going to think about this value in a second. And then let's imagine we had a, uh, you know, like a piece of string or something like that, and we went around the circle, and we measured the distance around the circle. That's another uh, value. We're going to call that C or the circumference. So the circumference is the distance around the circle. Do, 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 do. If we got this value or this measurement this way, and we got the width, okay? It's all the, the values that we need to uh, figure out what this number pi is about. So if we take the circumference 
of the circle and we divide it by the width or the diameter of the circle, guess what number we're going to get? Yes, you guessed it. We get this number pi. Okay. So the width here, okay, or the, the circumference is, is about a little bit more than three times the width of a circle. And that's in any circle. Let's take a look at this little small guy right here, right? So we've got a little small circle here. Here's the diameter. Okay, and here is the circumference. Doesn't make a difference. So the circumference here, this measurement, all right, and I divide that by its diameter. Guess what I'm going to get? I'm going to start getting these numbers. If I got these, if I got my little tape measure out or whatever, and I did this perfectly right, and I divided these two values, I would start getting a number like this, 3.14, bip, 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 and it would just keep going. Okay, so that is by definition uh, what pi is. Okay, pi is nothing more than the circumference, the distance around a circle divided by its width. Okay, and of course, it's the same value no matter whether you're dealing with a small little circle, a big circle, doesn't make a difference. That ratio holds true um, everywhere. Okay, any circle, right? It just makes sense. So, <clears throat> I'm going to tell you a little bit about the applications of pi here in a second, but let's get into this deal about, um, and this is really important about pi. I kept saying, I'm like, okay, uh, this is approximately uh, 3.14. Now, why am not? How, why am I not saying it's exactly? Why can't we get the exact measurement? Well, it turns out that pi, okay, is something we call an irrational. I know this is a crazy term, an irrational number. Irrational number. Okay, what does that mean? Well, it means that the actual value of pi, it, it just keeps going. So uh, I'm going to just be kind of going off memory here. I don't have my calculator, and I didn't write it down in preparation for this video, but I believe the next digits behind pi is 2.1. I think it's like 1.15. doesn't make a difference. This is going to go on and on and on and on and on and on and on. Okay? Now, it's irrational because these digits later down the line here or what we call, uh, they're not repeating. In other words, it's not like three, seven, three, seven, three, seven, three, seven, right? These, these are, this is a repeating decimal. If I had like 2.3737, okay, this is a repeating decimal. <clears throat> That's a different type of number, okay? Irrational numbers is, we don't even know what this is. This is gonna be like nine, three, oh, six, one, two, eight, seven. So you have this number continues on infinitely. It doesn't repeat, okay, and it doesn't end. All right, so it's what we call uh, uh, non-repeating and non-terminating. So if I wanted to write out the complete full value of pi, I would literally have to go on forever. Now, if you want to um, uh, really, you know, check out some cool stuff about pi, there are some like amazing people have like amazing memories and stuff that have actually memorized the digits of pi up to like some, I mean, like ridiculous, a thousand plus, or I mean, it could be more than that or less. I mean, just extraordinary. The people can literally um, rattle off. And I think there's like, you know, um, uh, contest world. I'm telling you right now, worldwide contest, by the way, 3.14. Okay. This is March March 14th. This is internationally known as Pi Day. I'm not joking either. <laughs> okay. So March 14th, put that on your calendar is internationally. It is Pi Day, but let's get it. Keep talking about this number. Okay. So, uh, it's an irrational number. It doesn't, it doesn't repeat and it doesn't terminate. Okay. And we have some brilliant people. Okay. that have, you know, uh, an interest uh, in memorizing like an extraordinary amount of digits of pi. But of course, they stop right there. That's all they can remember. Uh, but guess what? That number just keeps going on and on and on infinitely. So we don't try to write the whole number down. Okay. We just keep going. So we just assign it a little variable like this. Okay. We'll just say, hey, listen, whatever that whole number is, we'll use this symbol to represent that entire number. Um, so there is a fractional uh, equivalent, 22 sevenths. Uh, that's another fractional equivalent. But 3.14 will give you a very, you know, um, decent approximation of uh, 
uh, the value uh, with pi. Okay, so if you said, oh yeah, pi is equal to, don't, you gotta remember, don't say it's equal to 3.14, it's approximately 3.14, all right? Because it's an irrational number. And this is not a trivial type of um, uh, fact about pi. Okay, it's something that you should really understand that pi is an irrational number, that's why we can't you know, write out all the digits of it. Although your calculator, depending on what kind of calculator you have, you can, um, most calculators will have, if you, uh, it's definitely a scientific calculator, look for that little pi uh, value, okay? So usually it's under a second function. Um, but most scientific calculators, for sure, you'll be able to bring up a decent amount of digits for pi. But again, you're, it's always going to be an, an approximate answer, right? Now, Let's talk about applications of pi here real quick, and then we'll wrap up this video, because they're uh, you know just endless. All right, so where do we use pi at? Like, like what's the deal with this number? Okay, so pi um, is used in uh, all types of area and volume uh, problems. So if I wanted to find the area of a circle, the area of a circle is equal to pi r squared. That's the formula. Okay, of course this represents approximately approximately 3.14 and r is the radius which is half it goes from this it's half the diameter it starts from the circle center of the circle and goes out to the the edge of the circle so we use um pi in area and volume circles but pi is also used in uh degrees all right here's a pretty bad circle but here we go here let me see if i could do that a little bit better okay that's a little bit better all right so here, if I start and I go around this circle, okay, you would probably say, oh yeah, that's 360 degrees. I did one full lap, and you would be correct. But there's another way we express um, uh, degrees, and, and here we can kind of go like this, like an angle, all right? So here's an angle like this. Maybe this angle is 45 degrees, and I went all the way around, whoop, like this. That was 360 degrees. But to um, measure angles, we have this other measurement called radians. Radians, okay. And 360 degrees is equal to 2 pi radians, rads, okay. So in more advanced mathematics, we use uh, pi to express these radians, okay. Uh, they're going to, it's going to be more, yeah, it's more common to work with radians than with degrees, if you can believe that or not. So uh, this concept of pi, it's just it's used everywhere. Let's talk about something else real quick. Let's talk about a little bit of trigonometry. Okay, that is kind of the beginning of trigonometry. Now, in trigonometry, oh man, let me just draw that a little bit better. Okay, so um, there is uh, different functions. You might have seen them if you're on your scientific calculator you'll notice things like this, tan, sine, uh, cosine, these buttons, okay? If you, um, depending on what level of math you're at, if you definitely should have a scientific calculator if you're watching this video, but you probably see these little buttons like here, sine, sine. This is all what we call trigonometric functions. So sine, for example, this guy, this is called sine. It's a trigonometric function, but the graph of it goes like this, whoop, like this, and it keeps going it's a wave, all right? So you could see uh, in uh, science and engineering, you know, things behave with wave patterns like, you know, electricity and you know, the ocean, you know, sound, every, so many things are described by waves. And guess what? Uh, this graph, we use pi, pi is involved, okay? Zero to two pi is what we call one period. And then we have what we call amplitude and this is period. And there's things, frequency, yada, yada, yada. But this pi number okay is involved everywhere okay it's involved in trigonometry it's involved in physics science you know on and on area volume calculus all right so um it is an extremely important uh, number and probably you know as you learn more math it's just going to keep coming up over and over again so what was the whole idea behind this video the main idea is to get you to become friends with pi all right, don't be afraid of it. All right, it's like uh, my little my little puppy dog. Well, he's not a puppy anymore, but my little Bichon Frege, you know, 
He's a great little dog. His name is Rocky. And I'm like, come on, Rocky. If he's always scared of something initially, you know, you might kind of, you know, creep up to it. Then he'll kind of, all right, relax and make friends with it. Same thing here. Okay. Now, you know, you don't have to be intimidated by this number. It's nothing more than the circumference of a circle, the distance around a circle divided by the width, the diameter. We get this irrational number, 3.14, yada, 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 yada. If you want to memorize some digits and enter into the pie contest on March 14th, please be my guest. <laughs> Let me know how many digits you have memorized. Uh, me personally, I just use my calculator. Okay, I'm not, I have, uh, my mind is uh, definitely not capable of memorizing uh, 100 plus digits of pi. But uh, hopefully this video was interesting to you, okay, and informative. That's the whole idea, okay? And now, you the next time when you see pi, and you definitely will see pi, guaranteed if you're at any level of math at middle school or beyond, you're going to be working with this number quite uh, frequently, okay? All right, so that is pi, approximately 3.14. Again, if you need help in math, okay, uh, two couple suggestions. First thing, hope you become a subscriber if you like my teaching style. In my playlist on my YouTube channel, I have things organized in various levels. So I literally have hundreds and hundreds of videos that uh, are there to help you. If you enjoyed this video, please consider smashing that like button. And again, uh, if you really need some serious help in math or a pair of notes, you know where to find those. Just follow the links in the description. Okay, so with that being said, I uh, definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.